All right, guys, so today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going over Vulcan. What is Vulcan? Well, in case you don't know, when you've been hiding under a rock or you're an NVIDIA user, Vulkan is what is considered a low-level API. It is cross-platform between Windows, Android, uh, let's just say Windows and Linux. Uh, it's also been ported over to OS X using the Mantle API, uh, the Metal API, and Vulkan was created between AMD and the Kronos Group. Uh, they took what was the core of Mantle and they formed it with this whole next generation OpenGL to create Vulkan. Um, it was originally called NextGL or uh, Next OpenGL, whatever the hell you want to call it. There's been multiple names for it. Um, since Vulkan is cross platform, it enables a lot of great stuff for mainly Windows users, but Vulk for Linux users as well, and has been known to remove the middleman that is in between the game engine and the graphics card to let the game engine talk directly to the hardware. And that's the really cool point about Vulkan. Now, a lot of people are hating on Vulkan, mainly NVIDIA users, because they emulate everything that should be done hardware-wise, and that gives them next to no boost in performance at all. And um, they've been getting really mad about this, and I can understand why you buy a $700 graphic card, you expect it to have the latest, greatest hardware, and sadly it doesn't. Now, there is another graphics API that we'll be talking about in the next video, but today this is mainly just on Vulkan. So the features are, Vulkan is well suited for high-end graphic cards as well as low-end and mobile graphics chipsets. So you know, you're able to get Vulkan pretty much anywhere, including on iOS, thanks to them porting it on the piggyback of the Metal API, which is another low-level API we'll talk about for another time. So the next thing is reduced driver overhead. It reduces the CPU workloads, and that's a good thing because that allows your system to perform to the best of its ability, whether you have low-end hardware or high-end hardware, and it definitely benefits low-end hardware. Next is reduced load on the CPUs through the use of batching, leaving the CPU free to do additional computation or rendering, you know. So that's really good as well. And uh, you get better scaling on multi-core CPUs. DirectX 11, you could only do two cores maximum. There's nothing you could do about that. That was the limit that was programmed in it. And OpenGL4 was also designed to be uh, a single core application, and it did not scale well at all on anything other. I have a simple Vulkan application before me. Uh, when you do it, it pops up a window. It's supposed to anyway. I'm still working on it, and it's supposed to render a triangle. So, hello, triangle application. Uh, you get the point. I don't think I've done it right. I don't think the main.ccp uh, is working properly because I don't have a render file or a renderer file, and I don't have it initiating those certain things. So that's my issue. Um, so OpenGL uses a high language level called GSLS for writing shaders, which forces each OpenGL driver to implement its own compiler, um, which is, you know, kind of annoying sometimes and that executes at application runtime and translate the program shaders into GPU machine code. Vulkan drivers are supposed to ingest inst uh, instead shaders already translated into immediate binary format called spur-v. So standard portable immediate uh, represent I can't say some words I apologize representation oh for fuck's sakes uh, it also uses HLSL shaders are compiled into Direct3D by allowing shaders uh, pre comp <laughs> Okay, let's skip that crap. Uh, another good thing is that Vulkan has the ability to use asynchronous shaders. Now, if you don't know what those are, those have been used on consoles for years. Uh, they've also been used on some phones as well. They allow you to better handle shaders. Unfortunately, NVIDIA does not allow this. They emulate that feature, having no hardware ability at all. Th what they do is they trick it. So CUDA does all the processing, which actually defeats the entire purpose and kind of makes everything crap out. 
Now, the major game that got Doom, that ever got everybody excited about Doom, uh, the major game that got everybody excited about uh, Vulcan was Doom. Uh, it was also ported into Dota 2, and it's also apparently going to be in the Source 2 engine. Huh. Uh, it's in Unreal Engine 4 and ID Tech 6, so that goes with the whole Doom thing. Now, as of a few days ago, the original Quake got a Doom, uh, a Vulcan port. So that's pretty amazing, actually. Now, I'm going to tell you about what supports Vulcan fully and what does not. So if you're on NVIDIA, you bought a 2016 graphic card, you're on a GTX, whatever the fuck it's called, um, you're emulating everything. And that equals you get to 5% to 12% boost. That's minor. That's nothing. That's, that's Vulcan not properly working. You can say in your head, well, hey, it's a young API. There's a reason for that. No, there's not. Um, when you don't have hardware render or certain hardware features built into your architecture, you can't do certain things. Now, DirectX 12 and Vulkan were built off of the same specifications that DirectX 11.2 features. Now, NVIDIA never supported DirectX 11.2 because their architecture was too outdated. They would need to completely redo Pascal and Maxwell to even get it to support any of those features. And they didn't have the time, or they really didn't care. I don't mind whichever one it is. Now, here's the thing. Skylake and Broadwell fully support all Vulcan features. That's great. AMD, going all the way back to the very first gen uh, GCN architecture, that's the 7,000 cards, fully supported async in all DirectX 12 and Vulcan hardware features. So NVIDIA is probably about five to seven years behind on hardware technology, and nobody cares about that apparently. Uh, but know this, when you were using Vulcan, technically you're only having the performance of multi-threaded DirectX 12. That's it. Uh, when you NVIDIA users are using DirectX 12, uh, remember this, you're getting the hardware performance of DirectX 11 plus the, the ability to multi-thread with DirectX 11. So you're not actually using DirectX 12. Kind of same goes for the whole Time Spy thing. NVIDIA users, um, you guys are not using DirectX 12. You're only using uh, DirectX hardware, DirectX 11 hardware compatibility. That was found out in an article, which I'll link below. So um, those are the features. And in Android 7.0, it supports Vulkan, which is great. Vulcan support for iOS X has not been announced by Apple, but um, the implementation, the Vulcan implementation, runs on Metal, which is great. So we can run everything off of it. Uh, do I recommend learning Vulcan? Yeah. Honestly, the Simu uh, Wii U emulator that I'm testing could really benefit from Vulcan. I know that the guy that's building it thinks that it's not going to work and that there's no difference between OpenGL and Vulkan. He's dead wrong, and he's fooling himself. But hey, it's his life. If he wants to waste his time doing that, that's fine. Now, other uh, emulators like uh, the PS3 emulator and the Xbox 360 emulator both run on Vulkan. One runs on Vulkan and DirectX 12, and it's seen amazing performance boosts while doing so. It's also corrected a lot of the issues that they were having with OpenGL. And that's why I'm saying the Wii U emulator should definitely be run off of Vulkan. Now, the guys that were working on the DevCaf emulator eventually said they will work on a Vulkan application uh, or version, and that would definitely be very beneficial for them as well. Anyway, guys, that is a short little thing on what is Vulkan. If you were interested in Vulkan, if you want to know more about Vulkan, I'll link a few articles and development threads in the description below. Thanks for watching and have a good day. And that money ka sound was not me. Uh, that was my phone. ka for the win.